Greetings RC friends, welcome to the first day of the 14 day RC helicopter challenge on props and wheels. We are starting with this one. The box says it is a Captor IR control mini helicopter, but I purchased it as a JJRC SY003 from banggood.com. And it was saying one key takeoff, so they are claiming this has a barometer and altitude hold that's what usually one key takeoff means because it should be able to detect the altitude of the helicopter to take off and stay at one level at one altitude i paid uh, 16 dollars and 74 cents for this one and the shipping was 113 so total it cost me 17 dollars and 87 cents shipped to my door i think if what they claim is true, this is a gyro stabilized with altitude hold, it is going to be really interesting. So I'm really happy to see a three channel helicopter under $20 brand new. Let's open it up and see what is inside. Okay, here's what we have in the box. And surprisingly, there is no instruction manual. I'm not sure. I'm looking on the box itself and looking for a web page that will show the link to the instruction manual, but I don't see it. You can see the item number here. It says SY003A or this is this one is actually B. And it's the blue. The blue is selected. I'm assuming B maybe for the altitude hold. Maybe A is without the altitude hold. All right, we'll, we will see. And I don't think this has altitude hold. But usually the altitude hold versions, this left stick is in the middle and it is spring loaded. Right, the right stick. If you want to decrease the altitude, you push it down. And then if you want to increase the altitude, you push it up. So I don't think this has altitude hold. And other than that, we have a little USB charger. And this fly bar linkage, in case one breaks, just one of them. And also one of each type of blade. One is uh, clockwise rotating, the other one is counterclockwise rotating. The transmitter, Let's see, it takes three AAA batteries and this has a non viewable battery. As you can see here, the battery is already inside and the charger directly attaches to the helicopter. I just connected to the charger and a red light inside came on. So I'm guessing that the red light goes off and it's fully charged. Again, this is an infrared control helicopter. So this is the little detector that detects the infrared signals coming from the transmitter here. It, this sends a sequence of uh, flashes that usually cameras can see. I put the batteries into the transmitter. Let me show you how this infrared controllers work. So I'm going to give some throttle. And do you see once I give the throttle, these three lights on top, these are the infrared lights. I cannot see it with my eyes, but the sensor on the camera is picking them up. The battery is fully charged. Let's quickly weight it before flying. So since the battery is integrated inside, this is the total flying weight. 36.14 grams. I think I figured out what these A and B designations are at the end of this size 003 item number. So ours is the B, and B is this model, this like more aggressive looking model. And mine is the blue version, so that blue is selected here in the little checkbox. And I think the A refers to this more softer, more roundish model. And then the three different colors, red, blue, and black. It is time to test this little flyer indoors. Let's turn it on from this little switch. So the light is blinking. Let's put it on our helipad. And next we do turn on the transmitter. And then it just goes up. The light is blinking faster down the throttle. And it should be bound now. And ready to take off. Let's see how it's going to do. Yeah. 
there's a slight tendency, I think, to turn left. It's slightly, I think so. I think these are the trim buttons, so I'm just going to give you two click, yes. Those are the trim. Let's bring it in. So far it's flying really nice. Very stable. Of course there is no wind, nothing. We are indoors, maybe generating its own grass a little bit. So this is full forward and this is full backward. Kind of uh, going towards the side then going maybe I'm not pulling it all the way straight but so let's test this button is this light yep it turned off the light the right top button and let's do, try this one and yes this is the speed button so the one on the top left this one is the speed so we are on high speed right now a couple circuits around like this. It is flying really nice. I'm impressed. This is fun. It turns quickly. It flies at a decent speed, not breakneck speed, but novice speed. So the novices, beginners, shouldn't have too much trouble flying this in a small room, in a kitchen from a coffee table, in the living room. This is excellent. And I'm glad they put the trim, the rotational trim. Let's go, like, get a little bit of fun with this. While going back, turn it at the same time. And then let's do it for the forward turn. It is fun. This is perfect trainer for indoors, seriously. And I'm just realizing, I think I have done uh, injustice to that three channel little helicopter my son and I reviewed outdoors. And hence, uh, I decided to give it another chance. Maybe I call it the redemption flight. And I may even post that video before I post this one. So it looks very similar to that little helicopter. And this is really fun. Let's bring it a little closer to, to the camera. And that li little blinking light looks really nice. Say hi. <laughs> Say cheese. This is from the profile a little bit. That's me, that's not the, <laughs> the helicopter itself, that's me. Okay, let's see if I can land it. I'm just uh, trimming it a little bit. It's kind of uh, rotating slowly towards the left. Oh no, I'm not doing the right thing. Trim is here, buddy. Learn your buttons. Okay. Now it's, I, I hit that too many times and I'm just going to land it. Here we go, very nice landing. Yes. Now it is time for my younger son Kaya to test this out. All right Kaya, I explain you the, the controls. It doesn't have altitude hold like the e Sheen E129 that you have, and this is 3-channel, not 4-channel. So take it easy, but uh, this is going to be Kaya's uh, first flight on this specific helicopter. I just showed him how to fly it, but he hasn't tried it yet. So, go ahead Kaya. Okay, you have to get out of that ground effect. Good, a little, a little higher. Wow, you're yeah, doing good. Just try to you know, concentrate on keeping it at maybe chest level or eye level a little higher so it leaves the ground effect a little bit. 
Very good. Well, folks, this is infrared, and Kaya is not pointing the controller towards it, but it's still working at least indoors. And it's quite stable. I mean, he is controlling the... Good job, good landing, man. Did you, did you mean to do that? No, but I thought if I was close enough to the ground, yeah. I would do it. No, you did a good job. Good control. So, folks, this will teach you, if you are new to the hobby, after an altitude hold helicopter, this could be a second helicopter, with which you can teach yourself the travel control. And this is perfect for indoors, seriously. It's very stable, as you can see indoors. I cannot believe I paid only $17 shipped to my door. $17? dollars $17, $17. It is cheap, right? Yeah. The only downside of this helicopter is the battery is not removable. So you basically charge it from the port underneath. Oh, oh maybe I caused this, huh? Did I, did I go in front of it? Yeah, I think I blocked it. I think I blocked the IR control, infrared control. Anyway, I'm saying that you have every time you just do a flight, you have to co connect it to the charger to charge it. Because the battery is not easily replaceable. Okay, Kaya, let's land it. You are doing really good. You, wow, smack in the middle. I didn't do that good. You are a pro, man. Thank you for helping uh, reviewing this. What do you think? Just um, stay there so in front of the ring light. So. Personally, I think that it should be, the helicopter should be more than $17. More than $17? Yeah, it was on sale, but I think it's a good value, right? Yeah. You liked it, huh? I liked it. Okay, well, thanks for sharing. And now, folks, it is time to take it outside and do an outdoor flight. We are outside in the local park, and I want to get going because the sun is setting. It is almost 8 p.m. There's slight breeze coming from my back. Let's see if this little guy is going to be able to overcome the breeze. So I'm going to start with the slow rate, and then if the wind is pushing it back, I will put it to higher rates. All right, let's get started. Yeah, this is kind of full forward and and it doesn't cut off right away. It just keeps going. So it hit the, the tripod of the camera. Hopefully there's no damage. And it, it tried actually, con it continued to spin its propellers, spin its rotors. So let's try again. I'm going to put it on the high rate. So this should be the high rate. One click and let's do it again. Nope. Nope. Even the slight breeze is too much for this uh, little helicopter. So I can feel it at least a couple miles per hour. I'm just going to quickly check my app. This doesn't always show the correct one, but uh, let's see. What does uh, the wind show it as 5 miles per hour light from east? It's definitely coming from east, but it feels a little stronger than 5 miles per hour. So let's try again. It, the breeze died down a little bit. Okay, so this is full forward and it's coming down. I don't know if it is losing the signal. It feels like it is slowly cutting off. Maybe because of the infrared, the sun is setting over there. I don't know if it is uh, shooting any infrared light. Let's try again. Nope. No, it is, it is not doing well. It is not doing well outdoors. And it's cutting off. And it, the battery just got charged up. So what I'm going to do is just to cycle the, the power and just turn the, it on. It's in the bind mode. That stabilizes the gyro or calibrate the gyro. Turn this on, up, down, and should be good. And immediately going to set it to 
high rates and let's try again. I think that did may, maybe did the trick. Yep. All right, come back now. Let's rotate it. And it lost the connection again. So I'm just wondering what is affecting it to cut off like that. Because for a couple seconds it's good and then I'm going to start, I'm going to try to stay close. Just with the, okay, full forward, full forward, still coming back. Oh, don't, don't hit the camera. Okay. This is even slower rates, higher rates. As you can see, I'm kind of walking with it because it cannot push against the wind. And the wind is taking it and we are going with it. But I haven't lost connection yet, which is a good thing. So in a calm weather, we distribute, you should be able to fly it. So this is a full, full steam ahead. And I'm going to use the trim a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I have to watch my back. Uh, all right. Yeah, this is definitely indoors or, you know, completely calm weather flyer. And I'm not modulating the, oh, I was not modulating the, the throttle well. I mean, to be fair, uh, the wind picked up quite a bit. I don't know if you can hear it from the microphone, but it is probably more like a 9, 10 miles an hour from time to time. Photobombing <laughs> Photo me, okay. With that uh, strange looking remnant of a helicopter. <laughs> remnants of a e -flight blade. Oh, Blade oh, well. CX. Is there any original part left? <laughs> Look at the tail boom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to stop it here to just no, cause no further pain. It is great for indoors, yes. And for $17, you cannot go wrong if you are planning indoors. It's three channels and fl flies great indoors, no issues. But for outdoors, unless it is a dead calm day with almost zero wind, I'd not recommend it. I was just pushing it forward and it doesn't have the oomph. And you have to actually stay line of sight because it's infrared. You need to keep it pointing towards that little IR detector underneath. So you have to be kind of pointing there. If anything comes in between or any other IR source, infrared source, plays tricks on it, it's just going to cut down the power and slowly descent where it is. That's what has been happening. But again, I, I didn't have too much, too many expectations from this. Even the instruction manual didn't come out. Nothing was labeled. So this is definitely a cheap entry. Very inexpensive, less than $20 for a three channel helicopter. Okay, final verdict. It is good. It is good for what it is. So it is an indoor heli, very lightweight. It won't damage any of your walls, any of your furniture, you can easily fly it. It can take some, some hits directly because it is soft material. It's everything is soft plastic. Even, I mean, look, even the rotor blades are soft plastic. So you will have trouble destroying it for if you are planning to just learn indoors for winter time, for example, in the evenings, this is great. Yes. Outdoors. No, you have to be careful. Don't try it on a windy day. Actually, it's not really windy. It's like a very low wind for me. But for this little helicopter, it was too much. It is what it is. And we are done with the first day. Tomorrow is a new day. Please stay tuned for day two review of another RC helicopter, another three-channel RC helicopter. But I expect that to be a little better. Hope to see you on that video. Stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.